Good morning, everybody. Can you believe it is November? It is oh. Thanksgiving. <laughs> we're, we're getting where ready. Year go? I don't right. know, but it's going to be summer very soon. I right. have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. Is summer your season? I know. Well, summer is warmer out than yes. it has been lately, but it's been a good um, month since I saw you. Yeah. I have had the um, advantage of turning 65 just a couple of weeks ago, so I have been getting calls every day. And I pick up the phone and I hear, hello, this is Life Alert. We've noticed that you might want to have our necklace later. Are you having blah, the blah, chair blah. installed? Huh? <laughs> it is so aggravating. Why are you so old about 65? No well, way. nothing anymore, nothing right? Anymore. Well, then nothing why do anymore. they keep calling me? They have to well, make a business. They, have, yeah. they, they need don't money like still. It. I don't like They're it. They're hoping you haven't figured out that 65 is like the new 45. It is. Ooh, I like it that. It is. It's I true. Like that. As I knew that. As you knew that. What's new? What is new? Oh, uh, well, geez. Um, I'm really active with the Woods Hole Theater Company. I'm the new president there. So oh, you are been very the busy. Yeah, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. about the mm -hmm. opportunity. So doing some great things in Woods Hole. It's my favorite village. Uh -huh. you know, oh, that's it's really great. really fun. So that's happening for me. And, of course, fall weddings. It's a very big season mm -hmm. for weddings. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of weddings on Cape and off Cape. I went to Burlington, Vermont. Oh, wow. Uh, and did a beautiful wow. wedding in a vineyard up there. Uh -huh. And then I went to Dayton, Ohio. Wow, well, wow that's fabulous. Yeah. What a romantic <laughs> city. <laughs> yeah. well, these people were related to you? They're, um, yeah, they're yes. actually, it's kind of a cool thing. Both are kids that I helped uh, as ch as children, uh -huh. you know, I either babysat for them or, you know, somehow my life intersected theirs when they were little and they heard I was doing this marriage thing and they, they called me up and said, we'll send you out to do this for us. So it's very kind of fun and exciting to marry kids of mine. I've known for a long time, Makes sure. Makes you really old. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We're not talking about really old awesome. anymore. Yeah, no more, no more <laughs> old. How about you, no youngster? What's new? Ah, uh, youngster. I love yeah. that. You know, I turned 50 yeah. this year. I turned yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Just a kid. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's the new 20. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Whoa! Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. So what, what's new? So I have a, I brought a book, Bets. Yeah, what you got? So I have, everybody should see it, Perfect Phrases for Dealing with Difficult People. Oh. And the reason I have this book is that I was out in the garage this weekend and found it in the recycle bin. What? I had never, <laughs> seen, the book, had never seen the book before. Uh -huh. I had no idea who it belonged to. And there's highlighted phrases. Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding yeah. me. So I dug it out because <gasps> I thought, this has got to be handy. Did, Did your husband I was this? going to deal with you? I, well, that's <laughs> That's what I want. And there's all these funny phrases in okay, here. Tell you know, us like, one. We only have time um, for one. Okay, so yeah. um, so um, we need to deal with each other in a more compassionate and positive way. So it works, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I heard what you're okay. saying, and I am fully enveloping it. <laughs> there's, there's two. No way. No, right? fully enveloping. You need yeah, to find yeah. another word for it. I'm fully processing it or I know. something. I think the challenge it. is getting it off your lips without uh -huh. looking ridiculous. Right, right, right. Yeah. right, right. <laughs> anyway, there it is. That's my book. Oh, that is very Sounds funny. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to mention one newsworthy thing because we're always talking about Donald Trump and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I would like to talk about Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey for a quick minute because I am disgusted and mm -hmm. very upset. Yeah. As you should be. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about it. Okay. What have I missed? A lot. Wow. Okay. Um, that's awesome. You're living, you must be living I news don't free. Turn the, yes. That's, that's very interesting. I made a, a commitment to myself to not watch the news in 2017, and mm -hmm. I have not. So, um, Kevin Spacey, love him. What's well, going on? Well, you won't love you him won't anymore. Love him now. Because the first thing that surfaced was that he had I molested a young man. <laughs> oh. And um, mm -hmm. many years ago, and I was hoping that was maybe a... Is there truth something. to that? There's truth to that, and unfortunately, it's not just one of those things that well, they do to get extort from. No, because his well, lot, big movie has been canceled that he mm -hmm. was about to star in, and his television show House of Cards was canceled. Yep. Netflix and completely separated from him. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Harvey Weinstein, big film mogul, blah blah blah. 
he evidently has been. Yeah, but um, he's always been squirrely, I think. Well, he's more than squirrely. Okay. But we won't mm -hmm. waste time talking about yeah. it. I'll just tell you to read up on it because it's pretty yucky stuff. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. Garbage in, garbage out. Uh -huh. I want to know. I, mm -hmm. I, I like um, that. That's um, well, it's clear. Except, though, to retain this, which is, I think, you know, there's a movement happening, which is that women are coming forward. And yeah, I think the message important. that's, yeah, there's something yeah, there's, that there's, there's change of foot, and it's very good for all of us. And, you know, it's, these guys are going to stop. They're going to have to stop because women are coming forward. So that's the They're only getting, thing you need to know about the news right now. The good news <laughs> is people are getting their voices yeah. around that stuff. Uh, right. Yeah. Very, very, very much so. Yeah. Back to abundance, because it's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, and we don't want to talk too much about these terrible men and Christine is sick but if she weren't she'd be right in there mm -hmm. with us talking <laughs> about would. it okay I was um, in Mashpee Commons the other day and I was walking by a store that I like very much the right source okay mm -hmm. and they had a sign out in front it said it is not happy people who are thankful it is thankful people who are happy mm. Amen. And I love that, which brings me to our theme of today's mm -hmm. show, Abundance. Great. Um, and I think we all feel like we have a lot of abundance in our life in a really positive way. Right. So I want to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back with a friend of mine, Pam Remington, from our writing class, who noticed something very interesting about the word abundance. Oh, great. Mm, Be right now back. I'm intrigued. Pam and I are in Christine's writing class. Oh, excellent. And one day, she brought her daughter in. And I don't know, you told us this story about the word abundance. You tell yes. the story. OK. So it is, we have to go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so back when my daughter, my magnificent daughter, Jess, was in middle school. She's 31 now. So, oh, this, was, so this was a while ago. Mm -hmm. We were in the kitchen late one night, and it was a stressful time because it was middle school, and it was Ugh. exam time. <laughs> and so we made up this little dance to kind of break the tension. It was sort of a riff on the hokey pokey. <laughs> <laughs> Not complex. And it, we called it the butt wiggle, so you kind of see where that's going. Um, and we have actually done this dance since then, you know, usually late in the kitchen at night, even now when she's, when she's around. So fast forward. Stay with me. <laughs> um, earlier this year, I was writing the word abundance in my journal over and over and over again, you know, inviting the universe, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also just as a reminder to myself in these times, mm -hmm. you know, that there's so much abundance. And I, and I, and I, want, to, I want to live and act and think in a, in a position of abundance rather than scarcity. Mm -hmm. And um, I truly believe that power and love and life is not a zero-sum game. And right. that there's so much abundance. So anyway. That's great. So I was writing the word abundance over and over again. And I have very messy handwriting, sort of a weird <laughs> script thing. And I looked at it at some point. It's like, look at that. That says a bun dance. <laughs> Eureka! Oh my gosh! This is what Jess and I have been doing all these years! It hasn't been that. the butt wiggle, it's a butt dance! So I was very excited. So I called her, and I knew she was trying to get on a plane. She didn't pick up the first time. I called her again, and she finally picked up. Mom, what's wrong? I'm trying to get through security and get right with this place. Like, oh, I know, I know, but... And I told her, and she thought it was very funny, but did have to get through security. So, um... At one of our writing groups, um, next to a center for the arts, I shared this notion, and and I, I can't think of the word abundance anymore <laughs> without thinking of abundance. It's, it's abundance. Mm -hmm. So we do it a lot of times at the end of class. Everybody up, come on. Okay, Anna. let's We're do, it. do a little. Okay, all right. Um, you demonstrate first, and then we'll oh, do it quickly. Okay. 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 Not complex. Mm -hmm. Anyone could do it. You could do it. Adapt for whatever one's needs are. You could do it sitting down. Okay. Um, this is all it involves. So, 
it mostly it involves not taking yourself too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Something I do. We don't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. never. Yeah. never. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. Feel that. <laughs> okay, so basically all it is is wiggle your butt, rotate 45 oh degrees. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's yes, I'm wiggling my butt Wait. to a camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, John, ready? Clap, okay, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Do it with Jump, us. Clap, All right. wiggle, 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 wiggle. We're going yep. this way. Okay, so, ready? Yep. Ready. All right. Abundance. Abundance. So, wiggle. <laughs> and the music is? It's, it's whatever, whatever you want. Usually gales of laughter. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm doing it at my Thanksgiving table. So I definitely table. get the butt wiggle part. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I got that down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Okay, okay. And ladies. And I'll give a shout out to my daughter Jess if she ever sees this. Hi, Jess. I hope we are yeah. dancing forever. Uh, that's oh, that's great. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So yep. much. Love it. My pleasure. Thanks, Pam. Okay. That was fun. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. a lot of stuff in my house that's just hanging there that I don't even know what to do with. Today we have a guest, Nancy Bizzaneri, who owns a business called Lighten Up. She's a professional organizer and she can come to anybody's house and do magic. Oh, Hi. Okay. Yes, she does yeah. do magic. Tell me about your business. Tell us about your business. Well, I just come into any space. It really doesn't matter what it is. I can order, organize anything. And as of right now, nothing has intimidated me yet. So wait till you see my basement. I know that's yeah. what people say. <laughs> that's what people say to me. But no, I I always look at a space as parts, uh, like a frame in a movie. And uh -huh. you'd go around the room, and go piece by piece, and then you can see the result at the end of it. So when you look at the whole picture it becomes too overwhelming. So it's always good hmm. to go. But where do you start? Let's say you walked into somebody's messy basement. Well, I would go right around the room. You know, I think that's mm -hmm. so true, that yeah. stuff can paralyze us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I know that I had Nancy come to my house. Nancy mm -hmm. and I have been friends for a long time. And I had her come to my house, and what, what I saw was overwhelming. Like, close the door, out of sight, out of mind, open the door, put more stuff in, close the door. Uh -huh, right, right. And she came and she's like, excellent, let's get this done. So <laughs> wow. did she do your whole house? No, she did my basement no. room, oh, my junk room. room. Yep. And mm -hmm. um, really just gave me a whole new perspective of it because sometimes you need somebody else's eyes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, don't we, don't, do you find that people have, you know, such sentimental attachments to things? perhaps that it's it's hard for them to let go because that's what I see when I look at my junk. Well exactly but I, I look I listen to the words that come out of your mouth that's the first thing that I pay attention to so if you're picking up this cup say for example and you say well it was my grandmother's mm -hmm. I really don't like this cup I think that's really ugly but it was my grandmother's okay all I heard was ugly Cup. <laughs> right. you know? mm -hmm. So then you have to work with that person to say, well, it's great that it was your grandmother's, but you have the memory of your grandmother. And but you could also take this cup and you could break it and make a mosaic out of it. You could mm -hmm. donate it to someone else that could really appreciate it, or you could ask somebody in your family that really appreciates it. But for you to store this ugly cup is mm -hmm. cluttering up your brain and cluttering up your space, which should be for you. I just got five empty shelves in my, <laughs> in my kitchen. And how many, how many mosaics? I'm just thinking. I know. You could take a yeah. picture also, right? I think you, you were talking about the guilt thing before, and it is. It's like, mm -hmm. it, it, but it belonged to my, my grandmother, and, you know, and she is so special, and she really loved this set, you know, and, sure. but it's not fitting into your life. It's your grandmother's life. So I think mm -hmm. you have to look at it that Especially way. if it's in the basement. And That's you know, we're of the generation that we have an awful lot of photographs and mm -hmm. photo books and that kind of stuff. And yeah. one of the things that, so I have this bin 
of photos. And Nancy was so smart. She's, she's like, okay, let's just make one bin of all these photos. And what I've been sort of doing, not very well, but going through and scanning them. Because that's what we're all doing now, is we're keeping right. them. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's better for the photographs, rather than having all these old books. We had um, all our stuff in the attic. Well, everything cooked up there. Oh, sure. Right? Exactly. Sure. So yeah. a lot of photo books got ruined. Mm. But she was brilliant. She said, just take your phone, take pictures of the photos in the books. Right. And right. then, then yeah. you have them scanned because you yeah. can't rip that plastic off. And you, right. So there's well, things, it's that's just the looking at things thing. differently. I think that's the same thing as with children's art. Um, put it up on the refrigerator mm -hmm. and take a picture of it so that you don't have to keep years and years and years of art. You know, I'm so mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that because this morning I threw out three of my granddaughter's gorgeous paintings. She's four, you can imagine. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> felt guilty, guilty, but that's yeah. a great idea yeah, to take a, a picture. Yeah, and yeah because yeah. then what you do when they graduate from high school is you give them a little album of all their, yeah. of all their oh, artwork their from work. their... That's oh, a great, that's a great idea. idea. So, yeah. It's a way to it's a kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, biography their work. Yeah, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And see, a, yeah. as a mother, I'm the same way. You keep all their um, ceramics, <laughs> you keep all the artwork, and the same thing with papers. Uh, you keep something with their writing. If they wrote, wrote a story or right, something, right, you right. might you know, keep that. But not every test they ever took or all their spelling, you know. Right, exactly, so exactly. You just have to pick and choose. So right. what's been your most difficult organizational task besides Annie's house? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I really, because I think I look at it differently. Um, I see what could be rather than what is. Uh -huh. So I don't see things as really difficult. Well, I know one mm. of the things that I, that it's difficult for me in my business as a real estate agent is I often get these houses that are essentially oh. abandoned yeah. with all the mm. stuff in them. And you know, I just feel like everything needs to be recycled mm -hmm. and repurposed wow. mm -hmm. rather than hauled. Yeah. And Nancy comes in and she like does categories. What am I going to donate? What am I going to recycle? And what is absolute, hmm. you know, the junk man? Uh -huh. And, uh -huh. um, because of her business, she knows what they'll take at the recycle. She knows right. what. I wouldn't know that. I try to recycle right. it all. Right. So, do you do a lot of work with people who are moving also? Yes, I do people that them. are are either just downsizing and they just something has just taken over, and they don't have that room anymore uh, to use mm -hmm. um, things like that. Or if they're moving and they need to make decisions about and the packing and what they need to take and what they need to leave behind because it's very expensive to move and to, just to pay for the tonnage that goes in that right. truck. Sure. So a lot of people will just throw it all into boxes mm -hmm. and send Still it on to the, the next, side. Mm -hmm. yeah. which right. is kind of defeating the purpose. So everyone gets a chance to ask her one quick question about something you'd like her to organize. Like I would say to you, uh, underneath my bathroom sink is like a lot of junk makeup I make up from well, I don't know throw it throw you know? out what would yeah. you say yeah well I think any space that you have that you want to organize make it attractive to yourself and make it worthwhile um, we're in the bathroom I would use the plastic type bins um, that mm -hmm. would separate things and they'd be all the same looking bins uh -huh. not a bunch of different mix match of everything so how do you and, know what and I the, have in my <laughs> how did you know that <laughs> and, and the same thing in your closet uh -huh. I mean it should be attractive to you it should be make you feel good about your clothes and your what you have so it should be like low profile um, hangers and things that are easier to clean if you want a basket that's fine or a container um, if you want it open so it looks pretty, fine. Just take an old um, uh, a pillowcase and put it over the top, and that'll take care of the dust. Take that off. Nobody can see it. Take that off and wash it. So that'll protect it. But otherwise, get everything with tops on it that you can just ah. wipe off. So everything goes into a clear bin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Those clear bins are very important. Mm -hmm. Your turn, Trace. Any question? Well, um, so I, I have a big challenge, and I think uh, my big fantasy is one of those roll-off dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'll tell you why. So I moved from um, Cambridge 
13 years ago, it, we had a you know sort of 1,500 square foot apartment in Cambridge. Now we have 4,000 square feet, and we filled it because you know that's what you, Annie yeah. knows, right? So we filled it, and when we moved in, I remember I had everything written upstairs bedroom or master bedroom because in Cambridge you stuffed everything under the bed, right? And right, I remember right. my brother saying, "Trace, you know you've you've got nine rooms or whatever it was." Like I thought, yeah. you know, you still had it. Um, but the big <laughs> challenge is all, that we we fit into this massive space, which I and I look around and I don't know where everything came from. But the second and bigger challenge is that the same brother lives in my in. We have a, an attached in-law apartment, yeah. and he is a he's a pack rat. And so I he we share the basement, and so his half of the basement has now become the whole basement, and it's like every weird piece of junk that he can possibly find off the side of the road. He's like a, I think he's a hoarder. So, so for Christmas, give him a gift so, certificate. <laughs> right. So I want to know what do you do about that because my house does not look like that at all. But as soon as you go down in the basement, I get like palpitations. I can't go in the basement. And, and the same with the garage because he stuffed it full of oh. stuff he's hoarding. Well, yeah, there you go. I, I knew I'd have the best question. I, 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 <laughs> I do. I have to say, the most important part of what you just said was, it's my house, right? Um, and that being said, I think mm -hmm. sometimes you need to let people know that it is your house and that it's making you feel very uncomfortable. But you can't do it with your brother because you're too close. Mm -hmm. That's where you bring in someone like me that can help to make it better. And I'm not a threat mm -hmm. usually mm -hmm. to him because mm -hmm. I have no connection to your brother. So I can talk about things individually and Plus show him how to make it point. better and hopefully get through to him. <laughs> so that, <laughs> I don't, that your I relationship <laughs> is more important <laughs> than his stuff. Than the, than the yeah. dark department store mannequin he's had down there for five years. <laughs> <So>. yeah. <laughs> Fire hazard. You yes, know, we yeah. run into that a lot. Exactly. And hoarding is a disease, so it has right. to be very carefully to exactly um, yes. handled. I mean, I've had many houses where yeah. it's it the stuff has a life of its own, mm -hmm. even though it's years and years of newspaper. Right. right. And, and yeah. she handles those folks. And really if they well. are mm -hmm. if they are hoarders, then you do. It, it has a lot of emotional. There's a lot of things that have happened in their life to create this. So you usually need to bring in a. Um, a professional mm -hmm. therapist yeah, that will work say. with you to discuss and how they're feeling. And even when I'm working with people now, if I know that they're towards that end, I always say to them, you know, how, how's your stress? How are you feeling right now? So you are you part know? organizer, part yeah. therapist, I for well, sure. I always say that right? my business is, a, I am a therapist. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. the organizing police. Right. I'm right, not right. going to have any judgments <laughs> about anything that you have. It's the stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with you. and what I think about you as a person. It's just that we are a capitalistic society and we follow it and we like to purchase things. So, mm. you know, it's true. Annie, you don't mm. get a question because okay. you had her, but I did hear you say when we were off camera that you'd like to have her again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We already have a date. Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nancy from Lighten Up, yeah. thank you. Your thank logo you. is behind us. So anybody that needs or wants to call you, do you do gift certificates? Yes, I do. That's fabulous. Ooh, yes. yeah. Happy I would love a gift, gift certificate over the holidays, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nancy, thank Great. you. Thank, thank you, Nancy. So that was fun. It. Thank you. We're back with Margie Huggard, the owner of Margo's in Osterville. Have to give a plug to your store because it's one of those accessory gift places that if you go in, you can't possibly leave empty handed. They have so much good stuff. Margie is here to show us some table settings tips for the holiday season. Fun. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. we've got football, we've got Hanukkah and Christmas. So Margie, Take it away, beautiful platter that you have. Love it, and it's all yours. We'll be your helpers. Okay, <clears throat> well, starting off, you're going to have all your family, your friends, and the most important thing, and you've mentioned it before, is about abundance. Right. So we, are, we have so much abundance. When our families visit us, there's also an amount of stress. 
So what I would like to show you today is how you can de-stress yourself oh, and make this, <laughs> make this really a fun experience. You have your friends coming, you have your, your family coming, and whether it's just two people or it's 20 people, you're going to do the same amount of planning and work. Okay. So I want you to imagine that this platter is covering a white tablecloth and you start with that. Everything about setting your table is going to be about layering. Oh. And you're going to experiment and have some fun with it. You know, I remember when I was a kid, my, my mother would take leaves that we found and put them between cut right. Uh, oh, plastic. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And yeah. I in them. Yeah. So try it out. It's really a fun experiment to do. And you can put that all over your table. Oh, I right. particularly like to, I collect gourds. So with any table setting, you can bring over these oh, pretty. wonderful gourds. You can buy them in the supermarket. You can also do your pumpkins, and that's your organic part of the meal. Um, we have velvet pumpkins, and you've seen those before. Can I um, hold them up? They're absolutely. so pretty. Absolutely. They're beautiful. And they're, velvet, and what are they stuffed with? They're stuffed with beans. I was going to say, they're like a bean bag, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, I love them. And they come in a variety of colors. I'm sure you've seen them around. And, and they're, they're luxurious, and they yeah. make the table look a little bit more special. So you've got your tablecloth, you've got your pumpkins, and now if you'd like to start setting your table, we'll move the cords over, and this will be our centerpiece in a way. And then for easy cleanup, we have uh, Chilowich placemats which are beautiful to use. And good I'm for cleaning up if you have children here. or grandchildren. Yes, cleanup right? is easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to start by bringing over oh, this. Nice material. It is great we're material. Going to bring over a place setting. So you have here a pewter charger and then your dishes. And whatever dishes you use are fine. These happen to be Juliska which are lovely. And I like them because they're white because you can use them for all the holidays, Exactly, right? and yeah, it's right. very simplistic. Yeah. So whether or not you use them on that or you want to put Ooh, it on a, a beige um, Chilowich, you've got the idea that you can do a variety of uh, looks. You can also use orange placemats, gives a little color to the table, mm. as well as green. Mm, and it makes it fun. Um, I also like to take a napkin, put a little raffia around it or something, um, something natural, a ribbon will do fine. And then if you want to be a little bit more creative and it's really fun to stick a little piece of uh, rosemary in Ooh, like your napkin, that. put that down. This one doesn't look particularly healthy, but you get the oh, idea. That's, that's, that's really so pretty. Then that's something and that you easy. would do there. Yeah. Another way of uh, doing the table setting, and it's a nice, a nice touch. You can put this in the center of your table. And excuse me, Betsy, yeah, sure. you want to grab a little bit more of the rosemary. Okay. So it's fragrant, it's fun. And it's not too tall. And it's so you don't have to worry tall. about seeing the people and across. And it's shedding. That's okay. <laughs> well, that's that's nice. rosemary does. And you can put flowers in here. And I know, Betsy, you love flowers. I do. So that's another way to dress up your table. That's fun. Um, now, do these come out pretty. to be cleaned? Oh, they do. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Would they you fun? put this on your table? Yes. Okay. This <gasps> that's cute. Gorgeous. Little acorns, salt, salt and pepper, pepper shaker. We'll add that onto the table. And I think I still have Priscilla and John. I Alden. brought. Of course, you can't have a turkey without gravy. So you have your gravy boat. And while this doesn't look particularly fancy, it still is going to do the trick of setting your table. Beautiful. Put your knife. Spoon is on the right side of the knife. Blade is always in, by the way. Oh, that's good you to know. You have your fork. My husband always Oop. puts the knife over here. Well, no, we're doing it for the... Well, that's no, very European. Uh, oh, he's is very he European. European. Yeah, he's very European. <laughs> so there you have oh, your table pretty. setting. You can add to it, you can take away from it, and you can also, okay, we've got our glasses, which I don't have enough room. You don't have enough room. But I'm gonna make a little room. 
Okay. So water so and wine. So you have your water and of course your wine. Of course. That bon is so appetit. Bon appetit. You Don't have a nice meal. This, this. This, this is the best. Your guests should also get one of these. They come in packages of 12. You can color your turkey. Make sure you have in the center of the table, you could have some colored paper, colored pencils, and then that's a little bit of fun. And that is fun. as we said, adults are doing a lot of coloring these and days. Adults, I see that all over. And that will de-stress your crowd right first away, I like right? That. right? I like away. that. I want to use so that. So this is what they look like, just to give you an idea. And they're a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah so, they are a lot of fun. So I there. Buying them. I was gonna say it might be stressful. For me to figure out how to color it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put numbers, paint by yeah. numbers. And you should go out of the lines. You go out of the <laughs> lines. And you just have some other pretty Thanksgiving This is very things. pretty. You can put nuts in this. You can put any kind of, what would you put in here? Halloween. Oh, Not I'd Halloween. Put a little chocolate, put a little chocolate in there. And you dress up your table. Your picks. I nice gotta have those. That's cute, really cute. And my daughter-in-law's mother, mother-in-law, one of her mother-in-laws gave me this one year and I've treasured it it's ever very since. Nice. So make sure you take out all the things that you treasure. We talked before about uh, organizing right. and getting rid of things, but there are some things not to get rid of and you can use that in yeah, your house. Yeah, that are treasures. And really on bring, this holiday, right? For this yeah. holiday particularly yeah. because it brings a warmth and, and it's a pleasure. Right. It's a pleasure. So let's see what else we have. A little ladle, if you want a little colored ladle instead of your mm -hmm. traditional ladle. So you could use this for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and this for Christmas. And this right. is endless possibility. Yeah. And then I brought along another uh, way of setting the table. I'm just these over here. This one also, you can do the same type of thing, or you can just do the plates. Oh, and that's And you can nice. set it and you get a more woodsy look. Fantastic. Which becomes a lot of fun. Okay. So, the holiday is over and everybody is the next day. Full. Full. But wait, but at my Thanksgiving, we have to do, before we go to bed, sandwiches. Have any good table settings for that? Absolutely. So I'm going to move this over here. You can help me just move some sure. of this out of the way. We're going to move your board. The formal dinner's over. We're full. We're saying we're, we're never going up. to eat again. Everything's done. For the next five hours. <laughs> and then. But everybody needs to still have Thanksgiving sandwiches. Please. So you clean up your table, the turkey's on the side, and here we have football. And who doesn't love football? Yes, on Thanksgiving Day. So here we have the oh, touchdown. Oh, I love it. Isn't that great? And it's a lot of fun. And then we have football placemats. So if you want, you can use this as a runner, and everybody can get a football placemat so you can have your sandwiches. These love also that. come in packages. I love that. Isn't that's that fun? fun? That's really yeah. cute. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of fun. Great idea. Okay, I gotta definitely get those. So you definitely it's have to be a have very that. expensive show for us today, you know? <laughs> okay, now we're moving on to what? Well, before you know it, and it's right around really? the corner, it's Christmas. Right. Oh. So that's I want right. to show you how easily you can transition into a Christmas. With things that you already have. You have the white tablecloth okay. still. And you you have your centerpiece. But now I'm helping. You can do another centerpiece. You could even keep your pumpkins nearby. They still are okay. Oh they are? Yeah, oh, yeah. they're still okay. Because oh, I've been trying to buy pumpkins, little ones, and I can't find them anywhere. And if you want to hand oh. me this, I'll I just put saw this that back on. You just saw them. You have your centerpiece. I'm trying to remember. Roach Brothers. And where'd my dishes go? Your dishes are right okay. here. Okay. So now you're going to do Christmas. And this is a lot of fun. And instead of doing the holiday with the other color combination, you can do a combination oh. of plaid. That's pretty. Tartan plaid is the hottest thing this season. 
You'll be seeing a lot of really? it. Oh, great. That's good to know. Yeah. We have these hors d'oeuvre dishes. Oh, are those great. That are precious. Mm. I like, these are all different? Those, those are, are all, all different. different. So here's, here's some touches that you can do to keep your Christmas holiday holidays. season. Oh, that's pretty. But have it wow. be a little bit more Christmas. And ta-da, ta-da. Ta I'm going to just move this over here so everybody can see us. Did you spray this And then yourself? you add, <laughs> no. <laughs> but you could. But I could. Yeah. And then, to make it even more festive, if you have any containers, you know these come in all different colors. And we can just put them in one of these wine glasses to show. Oh, that's pretty. I've never seen that. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep, we can put them right in there. If you have a glass vase, they look really good. Oh, I do. Aren't those fun? Oh, that's great. So here you just yeah. and you could use those for yeah, Christmas and New Year's, right? Just I mean, dazzle, dazzle your guests. Oh yeah, for New with, Year's too. Yeah, New Year's oh, as well. Oh, so fun. That is great. So that's what we do for Christmas. These glasses are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. As well. Aren't gorgeous. they beautiful? Are they? They look glass? like they're hand painted, yeah. um, Jaliska, oh. and I think that. We have in addition these little tea lights. Very good. Again, pretty. keeping it low so you can see each other. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> keeping it low. Having your napkin by Mariposa. Always a beautiful table. Oh. And then VA trees, brand new dishes for this year. Oh, that's I love very the trees. pretty. Beautiful. I love the trees. Yeah. So pretty. Really nice. So yeah. pretty. Put really the nice. cookies on there, and you're good to go. Terrific, but what a great what about holiday Hanukkah? table. That is as well. Okay, so we got to take the Christmas stuff over here. We have to take Christmas stuff away. Okay. And, <laughs> and, and we. So do you always do like a silver and blue combination for Hanukkah? Or what do you do? Well, usually it's blue, and traditionally that happens. And I want to make mention that even Christmas, if you're not... If your house isn't red, anything oh. that red will look nice, if you have a blue and white house like and you want to do Christmas, then it's important to have the right napkins and those napkins place are mats. Place those are mats. beautiful. So you can do that as well for Christmas. And I think it looks beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. And you right. can dress it up this way as well. I love those for Hanukkah candles. Yeah. Those are really different. Aren't they nice? And They're very yeah. They're slender and fun. So this is your Hanukkah table. You can also do a colored vase, water vase. bottle, or wine decanter. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have <laughs> if you have placemats that you want to put at the table setting, you can just put a name on it oh. to let people know where they're sitting. Love That's that. Really That's, That's nice. That's great. Very nice. Now I'm going to have a big, huge Hanukkah party. So this is the Hanukkah. If you want a little more casual and even doing a Christmas theme, oh, these are, are placemats. And they're tear-off, right? And yeah. they're tear-off. I love that. And you throw them away. Isn't and that the, good? Yeah, that's great. So you have that. And one more touch for the Hanukkah season. Yeah. You um, have to have gelt. Gelt is the chocolate candy. Oh, oh look, and that's a nice Sorry. table. That's a pretty table decoration. That's a pretty table too. decoration for Hanukkah. Ooh. And I think that's it. That's it. This is so pretty. So much Mary fun. So, so much great. fun. Thank you. So, so anything much. you have at home, really use it. No, I think we could go shopping and buy some new stuff, but we know that we have to lighten up, so we'll give old stuff away <laughs> and get some new stuff yes, from new you. Stuff. Which great ideas, great. though. But most important, lighten up anyhow. Lighten, lighten up, up right? Anyhow, right. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so, You're so welcome. much. Yeah, this has been really fun. Wonderful. Here. It's been a pleasure. Our next segment is with Talia Landry, a member of the Wampanoag Indian Tribe. I'm going to be right back, and we're going to learn a little bit about Thanksgiving that many of us may not have known. Stay tuned. Wow. 
we're back, as promised, with Talia Landry, who is a member of the Wampanoag tribe. And I wanted you to come talk to us today because it's going to be Thanksgiving soon. And I was thinking that my grandchildren, who are four and six, are learning the story of Thanksgiving and that the story might actually have a little different perspective in your eyes. So talk to me about Thanksgiving in Plymouth. Okay, well, um, I guess everyone's different, but what was taught to me by my elders within the tribe, um, the first Thanksgiving wasn't necessarily what, like you're saying, has, is, what is being taught in schools. The first Thanksgiving is, you know, a nice gist. It's it's great and we do appreciate, you know, Thanksgiving because we should always be thankful and that is a way in our culture is to be thankful for everything, for people, for Mother Earth and for everything that Mother Earth gives to us. Love that. But um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the gist is, you know, everyone we're okay with, but the whole, the story behind it it might be different when you go from state to state. It might be different when you go school to school. Uh -huh. But as what is told in, what was told to me, I should say, was a bit different. So there was a first harvest. You know, the settlers did come over and the Wampanoags did. And that's one big thing is that the Native Americans aren't just Native Americans, they're Wampanoags because they're in Wampanoag territory. And we always, I always grew up hearing Native Americans never knowing a specific tribe exactly. was there, okay. Mm -hmm. And Wampanoag is actually a nation, so within the Wampanoag Nation there's 69 tribes and Mashpee is just one of them. Oh. So that's something that people don't know either, but uh -huh. Massachusetts essentially is all Wampanoag territory. So within that, that is obviously where the first Thanksgiving happened. And the settlers came over and they're foreign to this land. They weren't aware of how to survive off this land. They didn't know how to harvest or you know, plant, hunt, anything, because it mm -hmm. was all foreign. Right. So when they did come over, the Wampanoags did greet them and they did kind of take them under their wing and show them how to plant and harvest of that sort. But they didn't live amongst each other, per se. They were off in different colonies. So they, they weren't really say. best of friends necessarily. Yeah, I mean, they were yeah. peaceful because, uh -huh. you know, that's Wampanoags are always peaceful and welcome and there wasn't um, any animosity or anything. There was nothing that was put, putting, putting them against each other. But I, guess. I have always heard the story as if the settlers were helping taking care of the Native Americans, where it sounds like from our discussion before the show, maybe the Wampanoags were helping the settlers out a lot because here they arrived and, yeah. and knew nothing. Yeah, well, how would the settlers take care of the Wampanoags? Well, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Because <laughs> that's like me going over Oh, well, they to were trying to convert country. them to Christianity. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so a different part. So that was part. a taking care of Yeah, that's a different of part of the story, but that's not as much the Thanksgiving part. Right. You know, okay. that's, you know, because Thanksgiving isn't really a religious thing. Right? right, but the Wampanoags taught the settlers how to harvest, mm -hmm. hunt, yep. and, and really take care of themselves in yeah. an independent way. Even build, you know, their homes. Because right. they didn't know, right. you sure. know, there's different materials here and stuff like that. So how to take shelter, how to stay warm, you know, how to actually take all care the of the things. All the things we take that, for granted, right? Yeah, all the right? things, yeah, that you would learn from hunting, like your clothing and stuff like that. Everything was different. They, you know, it's like going to a different country. You don't know the language. You don't know their their food. You don't. Right, it's, absolutely. It's exactly like yeah. that. So that's how everything all started, obviously. That's how the settlers got to stay in the place that they stayed. I'm not saying they might not have, or not, but it was a lot easier, I would sure, say. Sure, they might have totally died off, right? <laughs> exactly. Huh. But um, we'll never know that. But <laughs> Another interesting thing you said to me when I asked you if the tribe celebrates Thanksgiving, you said, we celebrate a lot of Thanksgivings. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think that's such a great way to be. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a, like I said before, there's always something to be thankful for. Right. Um, each season brings a new harvest. Um, each moon brings a new being, a new season. And we did celebrate more of that. So there's probably four or five big Thanksgivings, you know, for s the strawberries, for the herring, for all, you know, all these things that make, um, give us our sustenance, uh -huh. that's what we That's would, what you appreciate and yeah, celebrate. Yeah, that's what our Thanksgiving is. So like I said, there's not a foreign concept to us. So the whole Thanksgiving and even being thankful for the fact that the Wampanoags did, you know, help 
per se in the settlers being here is something to acknowledge as well. So it's not something that Wabanaks can be like, oh, we're against that because, you know, it is right, something that sure. we believe in. It's Thanksgiving. Sounds great to yeah. me. Speaking of which, so I drive home all the time by this beautiful building on Great Neck Road, and I'm always interested to see what's going on in there. I know it's a Wampanoag building, but tell us what it is, why it's there, and what goes on there. Well, it's the Master Wampanoag Community and Government Center. Um, right, what land it's on is essentially land and trust, so it's reservation land, it's Wampanoag land, it's federal land held in trust for the Wampanoag tribe. Uh -huh. Within the building, we have many departments that um, service tribal members. So we have housing, education, anything you can think of, historic uh -huh. preservation, uh -huh. you know, it's that so sort of stuff. So yeah. it's like a town hall, but for the Mashpee Wampanoags. So it's where everything that you need that, yeah, information. Yeah, you would see a town hall. Yes. But specifically. Yes. But it's also a community center because there is a gym that you could utilize, like a fitness gym and then a basketball gym. Uh -huh. So we could hold, you know, events there, tribal events, but also outsiders could come in and, you know, rent out the facilities. Of outsiders some sort. can rent the facilities as yep, well? Yeah, and they also can, you know, sign in and ask about certain things, but it is essentially, it's like a town hall, so it's not like you can go to every department and figure right. out what it right. is. Right, bother but everybody yeah, there. Yeah, right. so, huh. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, there's not much to see in that aspect because it is just a bunch of offices, uh -huh. like when you get up to the second floor and um, bottom floor, but, you know, the ground floor, there's offices, but then you could also just, the lobby is beautiful. It's made, you know, the floor it has a whole bunch of wampum in it and then our seal, and it's made with a huge dome, and if you look from the distance, it's supposed to resemble turtle, as in turtle island of what, North America is oh. to us. So it's very, you know. Okay, I'm going to ask you one symbolized. last question. What do you mean Turtle Island? I don't know anything about Turtle Island. Turtle Island is what we're on right now as what um, Native Americans believe, because it's not just Wampanoags, a lot of Native Americans uh -huh. believe that America is. So it's basically like a creation story of America, of um, the creator had a few like creatures that you know, he was discussing who would want to help bring uh -huh. this land yeah. up. And the turtle was like, okay, I will. So he made the turtle big, a oh, big okay. turtle. All and right. then, you know, a lot, a lot of the different creatures took, you know, the land up and put it on them. And so that's how it was created. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's, yeah. a, it's a great creation <laughs> yeah. story. So that's how, I, I like you know, that. Nice. America was, you know, built, as we say, you know. So... I got, I think, off on a little bit of a tangent. I want to hear the rest of the Thanksgiving story. Yeah, as I was saying, um, the, what some of my elders have taught me was the first Thanksgiving, or what we would kind of assimilate with first Thanksgiving, what we think the gist is coming from, was when the settlers had their first harvest. They were excited. They, um, it was kind of a, I think their norm to like blow off cannons, shoot guns as a celebration. Uh -huh. So that's what they did. They shot off cannons, but us being unfamiliar to that, we yeah. were not sure what that meant. So um, I'm not sure, I forget the number, it was like 60 or 70 men, Wampanoag men warriors came over to find out what the ruckus was about. Not as coming in as they were ready for, well, they were ready for war, but they just weren't coming in in a hostile manner, but they were just saying, what, what's going on, you yeah. know? Because yeah. guns, they think guns, they're like, oh no, sure. what's going on? We should prepare. So they got all their men suited up and ready to find out what was going on. So when they went over, the English just said, you know, we're just celebrating our first harvest, you know, everything, and we're gonna eat, and we're just excited. That's how we show, celebrate. Uh -huh. So the Wampanoag said, okay, but rather than just believing everything that they said, they just figured they'd stick around a bit and set up camp and see for the next couple of days if that's really what they were doing. Oh, <laughs> so they were a little bit scared, worried about just, these you know, strangers on their land. It wasn't, they knew that they were there, you know, like uh -huh. I said, because they did greet them and stuff like that. But it was more just to see if they were really doing what they said they were doing. Because obviously when someone shoots off a gun and you go no. over and say, why are you shooting off a gun? You're not going to necessarily believe that, hey, we're just celebrating something when they could have just killed somebody, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so it was one of those things that they just kind of wanted to stick around and see what it was about. So when they set up camp, they came for, essentially, they came for, like, war to fight. So they didn't bring, you know, meats and stuff like that. So they went out to hunt, you know, made sure that they were okay for a couple of days. And that's kind of our way, too, is when we 
are around different people. You kind of give an offering. So they gave some game and they didn't necessarily sit down and eat at a table and invite each other and have invitations and have this grand old thing. Right. But it was, Which is what we yeah, teach but, kids. Yeah. <laughs> but it was yeah. essentially, you know, the coming together of, not coming together, it wasn't really coming together, but, you know, the English were celebrating their first harvest. So that was what part of the story was right. And then the Wampanoags did kind of partake in actually giving their offering, saying like, congratulations, and we're gonna stay over here for uh -huh. a couple days. Right, right. Not, they we didn't say, I doubt they said, we're gonna stay over here a couple right. days to make sure how <laughs> they were doing. Stepped but they, over there, yeah, right? Yeah, so, okay. you know, cause it was, you know, land, free land. We didn't think of anything, you're not allowed to stay here, you're allowed to stay here, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of how, what we know it to be. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for the education. <laughs> no worries. <laughs>